The next stage in the career of Brian Robson as Manchester United's captain is to move from midfield into the back four, and manager Alec Ferguson points out that this is a permanent move. Well, Brian will be tested today by Tottenham's Belgium international striker Nico Klassen, and he's as quick and as wily as they come in the first division these days. Indeed, as we look at the Spurs side, Nico has got a big attacking job to do because Spurs are without both Clive Allen and Chris Waddle up front. It seems their midfield will be packed, and a new face here is 19-year-old Paul Moran, who will be making only his third appearance in the first team. Manchester United have had a change forced on them in the midfield where that competitive little character Remy Moses is injured. Billy Garton takes his place. United begin to have a settled look about their side and it's potent too. And their growing confidence up front is due in no small measure to the arrival of Brian McClare from Celtic. Already joint top scorer with five goals and today receiving the Shoot Adidas Golden Shoe Award for his 34 league goals for Celtic last season. The referee today is John Key from Rotherham. And it's United in the red shirts and white shorts who get the game underway. They attack the, game, the goal to our right. And these are games that have a tradition of providing splendid attacking football and plenty of goals. In fact, the identical game last year finished in a 3-3 draw after United had a two-goal lead wiped out in the second half, and Spurs won last season at White Hart Lane by four goals to nil. Well, here's Brian Robson in this new role of his with a long ball forward for White side to chase. But Chris Fairclough, bought by Spurs from Nottingham Forest, getting there first. Both Fairclough and the substitute today, John Method, arriving at Tottenham from uh, the city ground Nottingham during the close season. Duxbury. Spurs second in the table, Manchester United sixth. Robson again in the action, this time looking for Viv Anderson. And one of Anderson's strengths, apart from his defending ability, is that way of his of causing trouble in opposing penalty areas, those little long legs of him getting him into all sorts of good attacking positions. word from the United bench. Richard Thomas, good reason to remember the game at White Hart Lane last season when Spurs won 4-0 and from fullback he notched a couple of the goals. White side. Gary Stevens playing it short for Paul Allen. Back again for Moran, Klassen showing his pace. And a corner for Tottenham. No, it won't go. Spinning away, yes, did it go? Yes, it has. It'll be a corner. So Paul Moran to take it. Deep one there towards uh, Chris Fairclough. Anderson's down and injured for the moment. Paul Allen playing it wide again. And Moran is out there still. Now it needs a cross to come in. And Gary Walsh getting it. Useful move that by Tottenham. And Anderson still a bit stunned in the Manchester United County area. And Mitchell Thomas going on. There's Mavitt and Klassen. Anderson's now got to his feet. And as well for United that he did because... He came in when he was needed. Duxbury. Garden. I don't think what he's playing at, and for a moment I couldn't be sure what Gibson was playing at, but he eventually got the ball back to his keeper. Anderson still struggling. Flash of heads, I think. Oh, yes, he's got blood on his head as well. Robson. Towards McClare, Goff climbing above him though, Billy Garton. This time Fairclough got there first. Anderson. A foul by Hodge, 
free kick to Manchester United. And Anderson really in the wars this afternoon. England teammates, but <laughs> you wouldn't have known it there. So he's taken a bang on the head and uh, a bang on the ankle, the left ankle. has built the wall for his liking. Just three in it. Olsen will take the free kick. Plenty of activity on the far side of the penalty area where the big men are gathered. Bra and Anderson, who's all right now. Whiteside is in there too. And it was Anderson's header. And he's now hobbling away. And a goal kick. Vinny Samways, one of the Spurs youngsters on the substitutes bench today, and the more experienced John Method. Duxbury. Larkin. Strachan. Anderson. Duxbury. And a useful game is uh, Duxbury, and here's Robson making one of his sorties forward, and he's found yes for Olsen. McClare leaving it for Robson, and saved. Oh, yes! Saved by Clements. And as Whiteside came roaring in, Clements could do just enough to prevent the United forward nodding it into what would have been an empty net. Great piece of play there, Robson shot, parried by Clements. And it was a question of whether Whiteside would get there first or whether Ray Clements himself. Clements just doing enough to put Whiteside off. Second to keep that pressure on Spurs, finds Olsen. And will Strachan get to this? Corner given. Hodge thought otherwise. So yes, but Olsen, the left foot to curl one into that six-yard area. And Goff up well to get it away for Tottenham. Olsen again. Anderson's in there, good save by Clements. Anderson again limping away from it, but the uh, header was on target, and Clements's handling was as good as it has been well, for the last 20 years. Klassen, Hodge, to Nico Klassen, Gary Navitz got in there, Ardiles, he tried a dummy but it didn't work and it may open up something out for United as Strachan takes it on, with McClare on the far side, White side waiting in the middle, and Spurs getting back as quickly as they can, and in numbers two, and here's Gibson, play for Garten, little touch by him towards White side. was a poor one. Duran. Ducks free. I say without two of their best attacking players, Spurs knew that they would by packing their midfield, would have to absorb a lot of pressure, but they've done it very calmly and with great confidence so far. Throw to Manchester United right on half time. Jesper Olsen. Oh, he's going through them all. And a penalty given. I think it was Ardina 
Rogers who brought him down right on the edge of the penalty area and right on half time as Olsen went slipping through he's tripped up and Manchester United get a penalty entrusted to Brian McClare who in the five goals he scored this season for Manchester United one of them has come from the spot Chance for United to go ahead right on the stroke of half time. 1 0. <laughs> Applause from the Stratford end as McClare made no mistake from the spot. Clements going the wrong way. certainly had a lot of the play in that first half but very few chances and it did look a trip and it did look just inside the box on the far side and so United get this one goal lead with a penalty against Tottenham and here they come again after Spurs had defended so well for much of this first half too Fairclough, none better than he. Robson. Oh, inside the ball back for Olsen. It could be number two. Turn back. And Fairclough coming back to recover for Tottenham. A delightful ball played again by Brian Robson. And Olsen in the end, really missing a chance, tripping up a little bit. And in pulling it back, gave Fairclough the chance to put it to safety. So another corner, here's Olsen again for Manchester United. Crossed by him and gathered by Clements. <laughs> Half-time whistle. And United in to the lead by a goal to nil. Right on the end of all the penalty from Brian McClare. There he is as he goes off. The striker from Celtic. Good work by Brian Robson at the back for Manchester United. You wonder whether Viv Anderson, who went hobbling off, will come back on again. He's really been in the wars. And you wonder, too, where Spurs might find an opening without their two key strikers, Chris Waddle and Clive Allen. And there's Ozzy Ardell is still arguing there with the referee, presumably about that penalty that he conceded with a trip on Jesper Olsen. That's history now. And it's history that shows the half-time score. Manchester United 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0. And for the start of the second half, Manchester United have brought on their substitutes. Clayton Blackmore, Viv Anderson, injured in the first half, does not come out for the second. Yes, wearing number 12. So Manchester United then leading by one goal to nil with that penalty right at the end of the first half. Spurs getting this second half underway, now attacking the goal to our right. That's not been a happy hunting ground for Tottenham this. They've not won here in their last nine league visits. Well, they got that 3-3 draw last season. Chris Fairclough. And it'll go back to Ray Clements. Too high for Duxbury. Can Klassen get in there? No, McGrath is back. But still Nico Klassen. Oh, just wide of the post. In fact, Gary Walsh got a touch to it. And a warning there for Manchester United. Klassen, with his class and his pace, can very often turn a half chance into something much more than that. And his shot was just going wide, I think, before Walsh put it away for this corner. Taken by Moran. Goff is in there too. Olsen might try to bring it away. 
savage there by Goff, but uh, still made it. And back with Gary Walsh. It's not been an easy season for this youngster because United's name has been linked with a number of goalkeepers like Dasseyev of Russia and Jean-Marie Pfaff of uh, Belgium and Bayern Munich. Feeling is that United do need, if they're going to have a real championship thrust, a really experienced goalkeeper, and that hasn't made it easy for young Gary Walsh. But he's putting in a pretty good professional performance this afternoon. Adidas, little touch for Hodge. Free kick to Spurs, taken quickly, maybe too quickly. Goff. Mavert. Oh, came to nothing. Duxbury. Holding off Mavert. McLeod chasing away. And Clements calmly poofing it forward again. And Bra with a header. Warming up a bit again now. Olsen finding the clear, but the flag will pull him back. Just fractionally offside, Brian McLeod. Oh, it is! Oh, it is now! And pushed away well by Gary Walsh. So Spurs, in the last couple of minutes, have forced a couple of chances for themselves as our dealers went through the middle there. And Walsh did up well to his task. An offside and a free kick to Manchester United. United manager Alec Ferguson would have been pleased with uh, Walsh's performance. He's third from the right. It's difficult to pick him out there on the Manchester United bench. Fairclough getting above Whiteside. Allen getting it back from Mallet. That's a good ball there if Tassin can keep it in. It might have gone anywhere. It was Ardiles who was right in there. And the ball just kept in by Nico Klassen, showing a grain, uh, tremendous pace, and uh, a devastating cross in there, which Ardiles couldn't quite reach. Strachan's got some work to do on this one, and Spurs get possession with Ardiles, but then lose it as Big McGuire takes it up, and the flag stays down, McClare's on his way, Whiteside waiting in the middle, Spurs were back in force, and Whiteside looked prepared to take on anybody there in his disappointment. And Spurs feeling that that should have been a goal kick, that it came off Whiteside, but the referee and the linesman say a corner to United. But after that break, it looked a fair bet when it was pulled back that Whiteside might finish it off. But here's the corner. Stevens, the uh, flag was up. It's a foul on Gary Stevens and a free kick to Tottenham. And Spurs making a substitution. Young Paul Moran coming off. And young Vinny Samways on in his place. Blackmore, Robson. And a throw to Tottenham. And they're making another substitution. They're going to take Ozzy Ardiles off and bring uh, Johnny Medford on. Of course, two substitutes allowed for all Barclays League games this season. Mavitz, 
Halfway through the second half now, Manchester United still leading by that penalty scored right on the stroke of half time by Brian McClare. Terrible trouble, and they might still be there. Strachan, a glorious chance, is thrown away by Manchester United. What was Richard Goff thinking about? The pass was never going to reach Ray Clements. Whiteside clattered into him, and the ball comes loose and gives Strachan his chance, which goes spinning over the crossbar. So lucky Richard Goff, lucky Tottenham, and not so lucky Gordon Strachan. Blackmore. Oh, a mistake there which Stevens puts right. Fairclough's heart was pounding there. And the first mistake he's made all afternoon. Now but time to get in there to attack Robson. It's with Olsa. Method. Chip by him, just too high for Strachan. Put away again by Gary Stevens for a corner to Manchester United. It's with Strachan. And he hit it far too firmly, it needed just a little chip, but Darton can return it for Manchester United towards McGraw and over the top. Kick for Tottenham. And certainly, Clements in the second half is having plenty to think about. Now, Mamet, can he get the better of Robson? Well, he has. He's found Classon. He didn't really have to hit him as quickly as that. Some ways. And uh, McGraw, and so close to a Tottenham equaliser. Strachan Olsen and a goal kick and at the other end what a real chance it looked for Spurs when that ball came through to Nico Klaas and if anything he hit it a little too quickly and the chance went away United crowd chanting the name of Gary Walsh, the 19-year-old United keeper. He's probably having his best game of the season after being under a lot of pressure with those possible big-name transfers, bringing other goalkeepers here, but he's just kept his head down and kept on playing, and uh, good luck to him. Still a little over a quarter of an hour left. And Klassen is looking to get in there again. And once again, Walsh is there. And I'd be claiming there were some elbows by Klassen on Robson as he made his way for that ball. But again, good work by Gary Walsh. And another corner taken by Samways for Tottenham. Comes to Paul Allen. Curled in once more. It won't reach Goff. Thomas, Medhard. And Mitchell Thomas goes up a gear, gets ahead of McClare and gets it back to Clarence. Oh yeah, today's attendance, 47,601. Certainly the United fans, with fingers crossed, hoping their side can hold on for this next six minutes. To get another three points to move them even closer to the top. 20 years since Manchester United won the first division championship and uh, of course with a club of this size every season starts with whispers oh it might be our season it might be our season but they really believe it can be this season 
And 20 years is a long time to wait. Clayton Backmore with a shot! <laughs> Turned away superbly by Clements. Clayton Blackmore letting fly with the right boot. And Clements equal to it. Strachan's coming off. And Peter Davenport, the United substitute, comes on. Olsen will take this corner for Manchester United. Voted towards Paul McGrath. Chris Fairclough with the header. White side, beaten away by Method. Now Gibson. Being chased by Mabbott. Thomas. McGrath. Method. Last five minutes, and United still leading 1-0. Fairclough. <laughs> Foul by Duxbury on Fairclough, quite unnecessary. Samways neatly inside for Mitchell Thomas and Vinnie Samways on a game for Tottenham. He needs a good ball in, and Hodge just got there but couldn't quite find the leverage to find the way past Gary Walsh. But what a lovely run by young Vinnie Samways and a really delightful cross in. And Hodge just couldn't quite get what he wanted on the end of it for Tottenham. Robson puts it to safety. Spurs get a throw. Check with both linesmen that the time is up. Mr. Key making another look at his watch. Abbott, little flick on. Method, a little flick on. But the final whistle is gone. And it's three points for Manchester United thanks to that goal from the penalty spot just before half-time by Brian McClare. He'll make the headlines, but there was a hero for United at the other end of the field as well, 19-year-old Gary Walsh, who probably has not played a better game for United than this one. A string of excellent saves, particularly in the second half. And a good fight by Spurs in the second half, making their chances, but not able to finish one off that would have saved the game. Final score then here at Old Trafford. It's Manchester United 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0.